we'll see. It's always fun. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I find it's always really strange when you plan these events and you invite people, and then it's still a surprise when they actually show up. <laughs> it's just great to see so many of you here this evening. Thanks so much for coming. So I want to echo everyone else's uh, the welcome so far. Um, Tonight's event is really a major milestone in a project that the Planning Commission has been working on, believe it or not, for um, more than a year. It certainly seems like that to us, I think. <laughs> but uh, I thought it might be helpful just to give you a, a little bit of a background on how we got to where we are, how we got to this point. So the Commission's starting point for this initiative around sustainability was to talk to a really wide range of groups that included past commissioners, as uh, city staff, sustainability practitioners in the private and the non-profit sectors, and also representatives of neighborhood groups uh, from across the city, and many of whom are here tonight, and again, it's really great to see you here. We also did some research uh, around existing um, sustainability-related sustainability city policies. And we learned, of course, as you all know, that there's no shortage of council adopted statements and policies that are supportive of sustainability goals. And also along the way, we also discovered that there are a great number of marvelous sustainability events, initiatives, and efforts happening in neighborhoods all over the city. And we're going to probably find it, we're going to find, we are, we're going to find out more about some of those later. Um, but it seemed to us that... Um, it was really important for us to, to look at neighborhoods in this because predominantly single family neighborhoods make up over 70% of the land area of the city of Vancouver. And it seems obvious to us that sustainability for the city as a whole isn't achievable about, without the partnership and the participation of its neighborhoods. And yet it sometimes see, it seems that city initiatives that have great uh, stated sustainability goals meet resistance when they, they get to the neighborhood level. So we wanted to investigate this a little bit further and we set out to convene a, com a community symposium with a theme of how can citywide and neighborhood sustainability plans mesh? And it's got two real objectives. There's a strategic one, which is to figure out how to engage the citizens and the city in a productive dialogue about evolving as a sustainable city of sustainable neighborhoods. And then there's a more practical one, which is to identify some steps that are needed to achieve that goal. We were really determined that we wanted to come away with some outcomes, some actions, uh, not just a sort of nice list of motherhood statements, but something that we could actually get to work on. And we really see this symposium, well, it's a first step, but it's also, um, we hope that it might add to the huge number of really fascinating dialogues that are underway in the city right now, like I'm sure all of you are out at several events a week, if you're anything like us. There's just so many things going on. But we hope that uh, we might be able to turn this into a citywide, neighborhood-based conversation. And really, the plan was to get together a broad network of active and passionate uh, citizens, and that's you, and, and invite you to get together to, to work out the best way to extend a conversation about the future of the city, to the broader community, and the broader community, I suppose, are the people who aren't here, and, and, and to get that conversation going. However, I have to confess, right away, we ran into a challenge with this project. We were constantly asked, what do you mean by sustainability? There's plenty of people who actually don't like the word at all. I said, don't use that word. It's too complicated. There's too many connotations associated with it. Um, and so it was suggested that we used a different one, and we tried some other words on for size. We tried uh, healthy neighborhood, and we tried uh, livable neighborhood, and resilient neighborhood, and all those things are, are really good things. But somehow it just seemed, they seemed to fall short of what it was we were really trying to get at. And so we decided that love it or hate it, um, sustainability is still a really powerful uniting concept. Uh, despite the number of times that maybe we've heard it being misused or co-opted in the service of something very dubious. So if we're going to talk about how we make neighborhoods more sustainable, it seemed that we had, some, had to spend some time working out what the word means for the city and for our neighborhoods and to come to some agreement about how to apply it. And that's really what tonight's about. Now, we don't have any aspirations that we're going to leave here this evening with something, you know, some big statement pinned on the wall and 100 signatures under it. What we're really hoping more is that we'll come away with some commonalities and some core principles that can guide us as we move into the discussion part of our event tomorrow. That being said, I thought it was important that we did take a little bit of a think about sustainability and look at some different aspects of it. 
And what's the chance of this working? <laughs> Let's see. No. Okay. For, can you do it, Mike? Can you move the first one out? That's great. So what is sustainability? So I'm going to have a shot at it, and this is the speaking topic that no one wants, so I, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> so next slide, please. Okay, so firstly, that's the one that we all know. It's an internationally adopted policy. The UN did it. A and we have the definition. It's up somewhere. I think we should have it up. Is it over here? Great. It's the United Nations. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And I'm sure you all know that definition. It's called the Brundtland definition because it was, uh, it was arrived at by the Brundtland Commission convened by the United Nations in, in 1983. And the commission was created to address growing concerns about the acceleration, accelerating deterioration of the environment. And it was really the UN noticing and, and accepting that environmental problems were global in nature, and so that it was a common problem of everyone. Like everyone in the planet was part of the problem, and everyone had to be part of the solution. It was the acknowledgement of that. And this definition, nobody really objects to it. It's got almost universal support. And there's other, some other well-known definitions of sustainability, some of which I actually sort of prefer to this one. But still, I was just wondering, how many of you find this definition useful as you go about making decisions in your organizations and your lives? Like, I find myself, I, it, while it's widely supported, it's sort of a mile wide and an inch deep. Like it, it's something that we can all agree about, but it doesn't really get us down to thinking about what we should be doing in neighborhoods. Um, so, and obviously in our city. So let's try to take it down a little bit level, a level and we'll do that with the next slide. <laughs> so obviously if you take it down a scale, it's a commitment made by our city. Uh, and since almost all of us probably live or work in the city of Vancouver, it makes sense to look at the, our Vancouver's own definition of sustainability. And it was actually approved by council in April 2002 uh, when council endorsed sustainability as a guiding principle for future development. And it takes the original one and it expands it a bit. A sustainable Vancouver is a community that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It is the place where people work, live and prosper in a vibrant community of communities. In such a community, sustainability is achieved through community participation and the reconciliation of short and long-term economic, social and ecological well-being. So it takes the original definition and it sort of puts some meat onto the bones. It helps a bit because it's, it tells us that in the Vancouver context, sustainability should be brought by, about in the context of a community of communities, that city of neighborhoods thing that we're also familiar with. And it also emphasizes the importance of community participation. Uh, and then there's also the really important acknowledgement that sustainability has an economic, a social, and an environmental component, and that they're all equally important. So that three pillars concept that we've all become so familiar with. And before and since the Council agreed on that definition, there have been numerous citywide initiatives to make our city more sustainable. Um, if you go to the city's website right now, there's about 40 sustainability-related reports and policies going back as far as the clouds have changed, which was 1990. And the city has set ambitious greenhouse gas, gas reduction targets, um, new constructions to be carbon neutral by 2030, and it's also council policy to prioritise walking and cycling over cars. And, and obviously walking, cycling, and transit over cars. More recently, we've had eco-density, and we've had Greenest City 2020, but it still seems to be really difficult to translate these big things right down into the neighbourhood. So I thought I'd try something different. Next slide, please, Ray. So it's the way we used to live. And this, I must admit, is something that I find a little bit easier to grasp when I'm thinking about a neighbourhood. And I think there's a lot of clues in the past about... Uh, what a sustainable neighbourhood might look like. Now, I confess this is probably very much like my, where I grew up. <laughs> and, in, and all of us grew up in different places. But I think a lot of us know communities like this. Maybe you grew up somewhere like this, or many of us were lucky to grow up in them. And they continue to exist all over the world in sort of villages and small towns. And, and just some of the characteristics that come to mind, like they have local businesses where the store gets in what you need and has produce from the local farmers and daily trips are possible by foot or bicycle and if you need to go somewhere far well there's transit to get you there and um, there's a local school that's the real center of the community a real hub and that's where a lot of learning and community events happen 
Um, there's really strong, resilient friendships and networks. So if you need someone to take care of your kids suddenly at the last minute, it's not a problem. There's a neighbor, there's someone nearby, you can drop them off. And um, seniors can be looked after. Someone will call in and check on seniors to see how you're doing. And it's just something that people do. They just do it because they're neighbors and it's their community. Um, talents get pulled in a really dynamic way. People share their skills. Um, elders that have great skills pass them on to younger people and as a result elders are sort of more respected in the community um, and uh, in the whole thing people get a whole lot more exercise they get a lot of physical exercise and they get a lot more interaction with people so in the end their mental health is better as well so this is actually I, suppose it, I grew up somewhere very like that and so I suppose it's a very that makes it a very nice principle to me but I had one other way that I thought it might be interesting to look at sustainability. So we'd like to propose the idea tonight, let's just work with it, that sustainability is like the proverbial elephant. Well, we can't deny it's the elephant in the room. So when you jump in the car to make the trip, the short trip, because you're really late and you didn't have time to walk, or when you buy that new thing, because you know you've got one somewhere down in the basement, but you just have no idea and you can't find it, or when you uh, jump on a plane because you just can't stand the rain any longer and you really need some sun. Um, we know when we do these things that they have bigger implications for the planet. Like We know it. We've made that connection. And we know that, that we use more than we need. And we know that we use more than our share. But we're so busy uh, participating in committees, writing letters, planning symposia, things like that, that it's really challenging, the decisions are difficult, and we just don't know where to start. So I'm sure most of you here have heard the legend of the blind men who were asked to work out what an elephant looks like. And of course, being blind, they all reached out to touch the elephant. And the first man touched the leg of the elephant, and he said, oh, well, this is pretty easy. Yeah, an elephant's like a pillar. But the other guy, he was at the back of the elephant, and he felt the tail of the elephant and he said no no I don't think so he said an elephant's clearly very like a rope and the gentleman at the front well he was by the trunk he said I don't know what you're talking about it's perfectly obvious the elephant's like a snake the guy at the side put his hands up against the side of the elephant and said no no it, you're all wrong the, this elephant's like a wall and the one who got the tusk didn't even think it felt like an animal at all he felt it some sort of pipe now in the story the wise man experience. And there's always a wise man. And it's a legend. There are always wise men in legends. I always wondered about that. That's why they're, that's why they're legends. We'll make it a true story. There's a wise woman. They went to the wise woman. <laughs> and the wise woman said, all of you are right. Uh, and the reason that each one of you is telling it differently is because each one of you touched a different part of the elephant. And so when we talk to people about sustainability at the neighborhood level, we heard many times that sustainability means different things to different people, and that's the problem. And that's the explanation why it's proving so difficult to make the changes that make a neighborhood more sustainable. So what we tried to do in this symposium is to bring together as many people as possible who have touched the sustainability elephant in different places. So we probably tonight got experts here on tails and some people who know a lot about trunks and I'm sure there's an ear group over there. And really the idea is that if we bring all these perspectives and all these things we know about the parts of the elephant together, we can come up with a sort of a workable idea of what the elephant looks like. And we know that this is really important because without a complete picture that brings together all these parts, there's actually not much hope for the elephant. And that's both the legendary elephant and the real one, I suppose. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to gather together what we learned tonight in a framework for work that we're going to do tomorrow with more than 100 community organizations to explore how neighborhoods and the city can collaborate more effectively to help us evolve more sustainably. And I'm going to pass back to Jeff now, and he's going to introduce some great presenters that we have coming up tonight. I think it's going to be really interesting, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks a lot.